Hey, it's Professor Gould. Let's continue our discussion about blood and talk about the Buffy coat, which is, <laughs> it's your protector. Get it? It's Buffy the Vampire Slayer in the coat. Got it? Your Buffy coat is actually where your vampire slayers live. Okay, not real va vampire slayers, but your white blood cells, which are immune cells. So your Buffy coat is made up of leukocytes, that's the technical term for white blood cells. So erythrocyte is red blood cell, leukocyte is white blood cell. And then the other thing in the Buffy coat are platelets. And there are gazillions of platelets and they're actually not cells, they're little portions of cells. They're almost like, almost like a vesicle, okay? Um, so let's learn more about these. So there are five types of white blood cells. Ooh, these are also called the formed elements. So you'll see that term sometimes for the stuff in the buffing coat. All right, five types of white blood cells. All of these, everything in your blood is made in the bone marrow. Okay, so these are gonna be made by special cells in the bone marrow that do mitosis and produce these uh, cells. Uh, there's one type of germ cell that does that mitosis. And then all of these are going to have a role in fighting infection and repairing tissue damage. We're going to come back to that when we do uh, the lymphatic system. You'll learn a little more about it in physiology. We really are in this class are just going to scrape the surface. Um, the immune system is really complicated. Okay, so the white blood cells can be divided into two main categories granulocytes and agranulocytes. Granulocytes are cells filled with, filled with granules. So when you look at them on a microscope slide, you can actually see these little dots inside, which are granules. And these are actually vesicles filled with the things that these cells are going to secrete when they become activated. The others are A granulocytes. Remember, A means without or not, so they don't have granules. It's kind of hard to tell on this one whether it does or not. Actually, it looks like it has granules. Um, so hang on, I'll explain how you can distinguish these. And then this one, there's a texture to the cytoplasm, but it's not little granules like this one. Okay, hang on. We're going to talk about how to distinguish all of these. Okay, so we're going to go over them in order. Here's the whole table. This is in your textbook. Uh, so anyway, all of this stuff is together, but we're going to go through them all individually. So the granulocytes, actually all of these, are going to be distinguished by the shape of the nucleus and the darkness and the color of the stain of the cytoplasm and the granules. So the most common leukocytes in blood are neutrophils. You remember these from when we were talking about cells and I showed you the video of the white blood cell chasing bacteria. That was a neutrophil. It looked different A because that was a black and white video and also because it wasn't stained to show the nucleus in a different color. Neutrophils have a nucleus that's multi-lobed, meaning it has bunch it has several different parts um, up to five lobes. So this one has one, two, three, maybe four, maybe five, hard to tell. The granules inside the, nu uh, the neutrophil are paler. Um, some of them are dark, but most of them are pale. Okay, so that's the neutrophil. The eosinophil is has, excuse me, has a bilobed nucleus, two distinct parts, and then it's really, really filled with much darker granules that are usually reddish or kind of a pinkish orange, okay, depending on the kind of stain that was used. Finally, the basophils, they have a darker nucleus and really dark granules. So like in this one, it's kind of hard to tell which of this is nucleus the nucleus is in here somewhere and it's bilobed. I think it's this and this. The granules are really, really dark, this deep violet blue. So the whole thing almost looks like it's just made up of blotches of really deep granules, okay? So those are our three granulocytes, neutrophil, multi-lobed uh, nucleus with pale granules, eosinophil, bilobed with kind of pinkish reddish granules, 
basophil the deepest colored granules. Okay, so then our A granulocytes, we have two kinds, lymphocytes and monocytes. The main distinguishing characteristic is that these both have huge nuclei inside the cell. And in small lymphocytes, the nucleus sometimes covers up the, all of the cytoplasm, like all you can see is a nucleus. When you can see the cytoplasm, it's usually just a really thin ring around the nucleus, okay? Big, huge nucleus. In the monocyte, there's much more cytoplasm showing, and the nucleus, not as dark as it is in a lymphocyte, um, but also kidney-shaped or sometimes C-shaped. Sometimes it looks lobed if it's really C-shaped, but the cytoplasm it doesn't have granules in it. Okay, so that's the difference between a monocyte and, say, a neutrophil. So no granules, big, big nuclei, uh, and um, in the lymphocyte, very dark nucleus surrounded by a ring of cytoplasm. In the monocyte, kind of a kidney-shaped nucleus with much more cytoplasm showing. Okay, so that's, those all seem really clear, right? And you feel like, yes, I can do that. I can identify these. Okay, when you actually look at a blood smear, what you see is this, and it becomes much harder to distinguish. Okay, so first of all, these are the red blood cells, okay? You can see they're round, they're darker on the edges because they're biconcave, and they don't have a nucleus. So even though they look paler, they look whiter, those are the red blood cells. These little dots here, those are the platelets. We're going to come back to those, okay? These are white blood cells. So this one is clearly a neutrophil. It's got one, two, three, four, five lobes of its nucleus, cool neutrophil. This one looks like it's just a nucleus, lymphocyte, cool. These two, also neutrophils. You can barely see the granules, bunch of lobes, definitely neutrophils. So what about this one? This one just kind of looks like a blob of like reddish dots. You can kind of see the nucleus in there. So which one is that one? That's the eosinophil, okay? Remember the basophil has really, really dark purple granules, okay? So you can still look for these characteristics. You can still distinguish them from these characteristics. It's just not as obvious necessarily in a blood smear. Go to histology guide, look at the blood smears, okay? And practice zooming around and looking for different types of cells. All right, now let's talk about platelets, which is the last part of the Buffy code. Like I said, they're not actual cells, they're parts of cells. So there are these special cells called megakaryocytes that sit inside the bone marrow, and they sit along the walls of um, capillaries, and they kind of ooze out these little parts of their plasma membrane and cytoplasm, and then those get pinched off, and they form the platelets. So the platelets, are they just look like these little tiny dots. They're really, really small, not even full cells. What is the point? of platelets. They're actually super cool. Um, they stick to the collagen in the basement membrane of the endothelial layer of a blood vessel. So if a blood vessel is injured, platelets stick to the wall, the injured part of that blood vessel. They become activated and start releasing the proteins that are inside the protein, the platelet start making these fibrin things, activate fibrin that's already in the blood plasma. Fibrin uh, proteins forming trap erythrocytes and it causes a, a clot or a um, scab. It causes a coagulation that stops the um, blood from leaving the blood vessel. So when you have a scab from you know a cut or something, what you have is a bunch of platelets with, fi with fibrin, uh, protein fibers, and red blood cells trapped inside. Cool, right? So here's another Awkward Yeti cartoon. Here's a couple of platelets. You can see little erythrocytes. The platelets are stuck together and they say, platelet party, and then some more get stuck. And they say, platelet party, and another one says, what's going on here? 
And then he gets stuck and says, well, I haven't had this much fun in years. Play the party. And then a bunch of them get stuck together. You can see the red blood cells are kind of getting stuck in there. And he says, I think we're stuck. Play the party. No, seriously, we're stuck. Play the party. Because getting stuck together is a play. So that is the end of our blood lecture, and hopefully now you have a lot more appreciation for the blood flowing through your veins. Up next, we are going to take on the heart.